let's start. Okay, let's begin. So we have been uh, looking at Flash ADC so far, right? And I mean, if you think about the course, we started off by looking at sampling and quantization, and then we saw how to uh, we understood the system level performance of an ADC. We saw how to characterize its performance in frequency domain. Then we saw how to realize sampling circuits, how to process those samples using switch capacitor circuits, and analyze switch capacitor circuits. Then we decided to look at quantizer, so we uh, saw how to realize a comparator and then we put together and formed the flash ADC and how is the flash ADC operating, what is its principle? Yeah, so it is going to basically compare the input, let us say it is a 3 bit flash for simplicity and the single ended case, so we have the range from 0 to Vref. So this range is divided into 8 regions like this. So we compare the input with 7 reference voltages from Vref by 8 to 7 Vref by 8 and we make the decision, right. So let us say the input is somewhere here. All the comparators below will give an output of 1, above will give an output of 0 and the decision is done in one shot. But the issue with flash ADC, uh, what was the issue with flash ADC? Flash ADC? Yeah, but fundamentally if I keep increasing the resolution what happens, right? So for an n bit flash, you require 2 power n minus 1 comparators. So the complexity kind of grows exponentially to increase resolution by 1 bit, right? And also as he pointed out, each of these comparators we have here, they will have their own offsets and the mismatch in the offsets, if we have mismatch in the offsets, what will that result finally? It will result in nonlinearity because ideally you want a proper step curve, but with offsets it will get distorted. So the uh, main issue here is because, see if you think about it, what this guy is doing is, it is taking this input and finding which of these 8 regions the input is lying, right. It is basically searching in which of these 8 regions the input is lying, that is all. And for doing that in a flash, we are using multiple comparators and that seems to be the issue, right. So if you were to avoid this problem, instead of comparing the input with multiple comparators, what can I do? The issue is because I am doing this job with multiple comparators and that is why if I increase the resolution, complexity grows. To avoid this complexity, instead of uh, doing the search operation using multiple comparators, how many comparators I can use in principle? I can in principle if I use single comparator we are okay, right. So basically what I mean is we will take only one comparator and the most trivial implementation is take this comparator first compare with the first reference level, next I will compare with the second reference level and I will keep doing that for all. This is the most trivial way in which you can avoid this problem and this will work. But here if I were to do an n bit conversion, how many times I will have to fire the comparator? 2 power n minus 1 times because we have so many reference levels to compare. You can do it. Yeah, exactly right. So, but this is again, it is not a great uh, thing. This again uh, has a complex, exp I mean, uh, you know, a complexity which is exponential. So, a simplest thing is as he suggested, we can do a binary search, everyone knows. Because if you think about it, it is a simple search program. The most efficient way to do the search is to first take this entire range and see whether it is lying in the top half or the bottom half. So first I will compare with the middle reference. So this will tell me if it is here or here. In this case it is lying in the top half. So in the next step what will I do? I will compare it with. Yeah, I will basically take this range, again divide it into two halves. So here I will go and compare with this guy. So this will tell me whether the input is lying in this range or this range. In this case it is lying in the bottom range. So I will have to go and search in this range. So I will co compare with this guy and here. 
so in this case for a 3 bit comparison how many times i am using the comparator how many clock cycles i am firing the comparator three times. exactly 3 times right here if this is a 3 bit so in general if i have an n bit conversion yeah complexity of the order of n but it will take n times so i am sure everyone has taken some programming course this is a better complexity to have than this guy this is goes this goes as a exponential complexity this is linear okay so this is uh, the efficient way in which you can do it and again we will compare this three times and in all the three times we will use the same comparator to compare okay. so this is the this here shows all the possible paths we can take in this process this is usually called the uh, trellis diagram so here again i have shown the range 0 to vrf is our limits 3 bit conversion so i'm comparing with total of seven reference levels so i have eight different regions and i have binary coded them like this starting from 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 so as discussed first we uh, take this entire range divide into two halves so first we step up by 4 compare it with the middle reference and find whether the input is in the upper half or lower half in the second step depending on whether it is in the upper or lower half we step up by 2 or step down by 2 levels compare with this guys and the next step we will again divide the succeeding states so we again go up by 1 or go down by 1 like this So here I have shown an example. So assume that this is the input, the blue one. Okay. So as usual, we start with stepping up by four levels. We compare with the middle reference. The what will be the output of this comparison? It will be one. So that is why we are stepping up. So the comparison output is one. So we go up and compare it with this guy. What is the output of this comparison? Zero. Oops, sorry. So this will give 0, so that's why we come down by one step and compare it with this guy. Output of this comparison is again 1 and then we say this in this range. And you can see we straight away get the final binary output 101. Is that okay? So here the first decision I make, do you think it is giving me the uh, MSB bit or the LSB bit? It's 101, it's symmetric in this case. The first decision I make, is it giving information about the most significant bit or the least significant bit? Most significant bit, clear? So the first comparison you make, that will give MSP and then you keep getting succeeding bits okay. and this is how we can do this. And the point to notice, you notice that we are not comparing the input with all reference voltages. We are doing in an efficient way by comparing with only the relevant reference voltages. And this way we can, instead of using multiple comparators like we did in a flash, we can use the same single comparator and do all these three comparisons with the same comparator. Okay. So this way if the resolution grows, we don't have to double the number of comparators, but what will double? The number of steps we take will change, right? Because for an n-bit conversion as we saw, we will take n steps. We are using only single comparator, so which means we have to wait for the comparator every time. So we have to fire the comparator n times. So that is the price we are paying. How will this program like this? Yeah, we will come to that. Yeah, we will build up to that. No, this is, see, anything you conceive an idea, we st start with the paper, we will slowly build up. So the price we pay with uh, this kind of binary search is that we have to wait for longer time. Whereas in a flash, in instantly we get the output. We compare the input with all reference levels in at one shot and we get the decision made. So this is the deal. So first, we, uh, this is the basic, basic you know, uh, sort of algorithm. Let's try to make a block level uh, diagram of what we are trying to do. And then from there we can make this up. So we know that we are going to have a single comparator. So I will draw a single ended version, so for a single ended case I will usually ground the negative terminal to ground 
simply because whatever i have for the single ended case i whatever i make here if i ground this guy for making the differential portion i can copy paste here and form the differential so that's why it's always better to keep the negative terminal to ground so so that it's trivial to form the differential version even otherwise we can do but this is simpler so we have the single comparator we have the input what are we supposed to do yeah i mean we are supposed to compare the input with some reference voltages so let us say these are the reference voltages what do i do we separate these two and give it to the comparator now here the reference voltage will keep changing so what decides what is the reference voltage with which i am comparing the input output remember that in all these comparison the first level is always half but the succeeding reference voltages will depend on the previous comparator output is that okay so we have to sense the comparator's output i'll have some logic here that will tell me what should be the reference voltage with which i compare and every time the comparator is operated it is going to give a digital data that we have to store it in a register right and this is the block level representation so as you see this is essentially a negative feedback system right and we just have a single comparator here so now we come up with something new next thing is to give this a name now if you are a programmer you will call this binary search adc but we are a circuit designers we have to give a cool name to show we are more cooler and the name given is successive approximation adc sounds cooler at least right and the classic name for this is sar where uh, this r stands for the register i mean at least success approximation is a better name but i know they thought if it if it just says will be it will be sa adc so this in sound nice so they wanted to add a consonant so maybe they added a whatever but yeah this is the classical name sa adc so this is the block level uh, diagram we have now let's try to make this into a circuit that's the next step so here if you look at it we just have a comparator you know how to design it any kind of regenerative latch like the strong arm latch will do we have this reference subtraction and the logic so we just have to figure out these two things so let's do that let's start with the uh, subtraction of the input with the reference and uh, before that just want to remind you one fact so let us say i have a capacitor which is uh, just asked to some initial voltage say vx how can i model this initial voltage i can think of it as a capacitor without any initial condition and i can think of as adding a voltage source in series with it right so these are the terminals these are the corresponding terminals so i'll turn the plate around i'll say that if i have a capacitor in series with a voltage source i can think of it as though it was charged to that voltage in a previous clockwise okay so let's have that in the back of our mind and let's try to form a, a simple two bit sar let's start with a single ended case so the range is from 0 to vref for a two bit case what are the reference voltages i'll have to compare my input with by 2 ah first is by 2 yeah i'll ascending order i'll write vref by 4 and 3/4 vref great and remember that uh, we have to subtract the input from the reference and store that voltage somewhere and feed it to the comparator how can i store a voltage i need to have a capacitor for storing that voltage so i'm going to have a capacitor for sure no doubt so now you see that the minimum reference voltage i have to generate is vref by 4 i have a reference vref how will i generate vref by 4 we can use a resistive divider but here i already have a capacitor so i can have a capacitive divider so i'll have something like this 
So what should be the value of the capacitors? What should be this capacitor and what should be this guy? I should get a value Vrf by 4. What is the value of this capacitor and this capacitor? So the left side is 3C or right side is 3C? Okay. Is that okay? So this is how it should be. So this will give us Vrf by 2. So now I also need to generate Vrf by 2. Right? So how should, I mean I have a total capacitance of 4C. Oops, sorry. So to generate Vrf by 2, how should I have it? I should have 2C, 2C. This is ground and Vrf. But remember that in the for generating Vrf by 4, I needed a I need a single capacitor of C connected to Vrf. So how should I implement this 2C as? I mean, is that logic? Is that question clear? See, for generating Vrf by 4, we needed a total of 3C connected to ground and a C connected to Vrf. For generating Vrf by 2, we need a total capacitance of 2C connected to ground and Vrf, right? But see, for Vrf by 4, I, I just want a single capacitance of C. So I cannot have a capacitor of 2C. I should have C and C in parallel. Is that okay? So what I am going to do is C. So which means how should this 3C be split as? 2C and C. Fine. So this will be split as. No, we can do that also, but this is more efficient. We'll see. Yeah, no, we'll see, right? This is giving Vrf by 4, Vrf by 2. So, right now I have the structure like this 2C, C, and C. For getting 3 Vrf by 4, what should I do? A total of 3C capacitors must be connected to Vrf. So, I'll say this is the 3C capacitors connected to Vrf and go. I mean, I can even connect this guy to VRF and this to ground. But the reason why I am connecting this to VRF is, if I do that, I see this capacitor is always connected to VRF. So which means I don't have to worry about this guy. So this is VRF by 4. So which means in a 2 bits R, I will have the capacitance structure like this. I will have 2C, C and C. So the last one is always connected to VRF. And these guys are either connected to VRF or to ground. How we will control the switches logic we will see later but as of now this is the connection we want. Okay. So we know how to generate these voltages now let us go and subtract it with the input. So the first comparison we have to do is with Vrf by 2. So I have to generate this voltage. So I already know how to generate uh, Vrf by 2. So I will take 2C, C. It cannot be really fast as flash, obviously, but that's the price we are paying, right? But as we will see, this can be uh, not, this won't be as slow, I mean, this won't be that slow. And in fact, uh, for all the time interleaved ADCs, the gigabit, I mean, hundreds of gigabits per second ADCs we saw in the last class, people interleave SAR only, this ADC is only interleaved. Okay, so let's say this is the voltage we want to generate. Now, uh, let's go down. We had this connection for getting Vrf by 2. Now we already have a voltage Vrf by 2. What is the additional voltage I should add here so that I will get V in minus Vrf by 2? V in minus Vrf, right? So if I go and add a voltage which is V in minus Vrf, I will get this. Fine? So now this is the circuit we have. We have a voltage Vrf by 2. We, are we need to shift this voltage by V in minus Vrf. If I had to give you all ideal components in the world, what is the simplest way in which you will do? I will put a voltage source of that value in series. Yeah, let us come to that. This, this can be done uh, slightly differently also, but in principle this is fine. 
so this is v in minus v ref so this will give me v in minus v ref by 2 fine now what i can think do is i can basically take this voltage source and push it to each of these branches fine same this basically you know that we can push voltage sources to all the branches connected to it so if i do that let me copy it then so what i'll have here i'll have the voltage source v in minus v ref so here also i have it along with v ref so i'll draw it like this so and then i have the fine which one yeah but we'll come to that yeah yeah I, the reason we are doing it is for some reason so now you see we have uh, three capacitors in series with each of these capacitors we have a voltage source so if you have a capacitor in series with a voltage source how can we think of that as you can think of it as a capacitor being already charged to that voltage in a previous clock phase so this is as though i take these guys and put in an initial condition of v in minus v ref so for doing that i'll put v in here okay and if you think about it this is indeed the phase at which we are sampling the input right because this is where the uh, capacitor is connected to the input and this is this is indeed a sampling phase also okay so to summarize first what we have to do is sample the input like this i have the binary capacitor structure to see c and c in the sampling phase i'll go and do this so this is sampling phase once i do that i'll establish that initial voltage across the capacitors so to then to get v in minus v ref by 2 i'll simply take one 2c capacitor to ground and the other two to v ref so in the next phase i'll call it phi 1 the connection will be this this is grounded okay and this will give me v in minus v ref by 2 again you can go and work out using charge conservation and find that this voltage is indeed v in minus v ref by 2 okay. i'll give that as an exercise so this is done so after v in minus v ref by 2 what are what should we do this is the first step this will give the msb so for the second step what what should i compare the input with let's say the comparison is 1 this is let us say if v in is indeed greater than v ref by 2 3 fourth right so in the second step i'll call it let us say phi 2 a 3 v ref by 4 now i already have put an initial voltage of v in minus v ref so what is the additional voltage i have to add v ref by 4 so i just need to take this structure configure it to have a vrf by 4 so which means single sorry yeah the capacitance of c will be connected to vrf these two will be grounded fine and if the comparison output was a zero previous before input was less than vrf by 2 what is the voltage with which i should compare v ref by 4 right so i'll call it let us say phi 2b so i have to do v in minus v ref by 4 again we already have put in this initial condition so i should just add 3 4 so this always connected to v ref sorry So this way we can actually do this. So now if you think about it, I mean the simple way to look at this is in the first phase we are comparing with v ref by 2. 
so which means we are connecting i mean this is basically 2 vrf by 4 remember so we are connecting a total of 2c capacitor to ground in the second phase we are comparing with 3 vrf by 4 so you are connecting a total of 3c to ground in the other uh, complementary phase we are comparing with vrf by 4 single capacitor c connected to ground that's all great so this is a uh, 2 bits r so let's try to extend it for a 3 bits r that will come to it later first let's generalize it for n bit and then we'll do it again single ended so 0 to vrf so what are the reference voltages i'll have in a 3 bits r remember it's all uh, it will start vrf by 8 2 vrf by 8 and so on till 7 vrf by 8 now in a 2 bits r i already have the capacitor structure like this 2c c and c now for a 3 bits r the reference i have to generate is vrf by 8 what is the total capacitance i should have 8c so i already have 2c c and c what should i do I can put a 4C capacitor. I mean, if you think about it, it is all for a 2 bit. The, if you have a 2 bit binary, we basically uh, this is basically 2 power 0, 2 power 1, and that is why even the capacitors were structured like that. Right? So here it is a 3 bit. So this is 2 power 0, 2 power 1, 2 power 2. And again, if you think about it, for finding the MSB bit, what uh, we are switching the this capacitor to ground, and that is indeed corresponding to the MSB bit. To get the information of the second bit, we are switching the second capacitor to ground. Okay. So this is in direct correlation with the way binary numbers we are we are uh, treating with treating the binary numbers. So for uh, three bits are this all we will have. And as usual, the last guy is always connected to VRF. So again, uh, let's quickly look at it. Initially, you have to compare with VRF by 2. So what would I do? VRF by 2 is basically 4 VRF by 8. I'll connect the 4C to ground. This will be VRF. Next, let us say I want to compare with uh, 3 4. Yeah, yeah, you can do anything. But uh, this is more, you'll find that the logic here is simpler. So uh, let us say after VRF by 2 we are comparing with 3 4th VRF, what will I do? 3 4th VRF is 6 8th of VRF, so we will connect total of 6 C to ground. Now if I want to co compare with uh, 5 8th VRF, that is all. So this here shows the entire possibilities, it is readable. So as usual first the comparison with is with middle voltage for that we are switching the msb capacitor to ground and in the second phase we are checking with 6 vrf by 8 so we are doing this in the other phase we are comparing with 2 vrf by 8 so only 2c is connected to ground 7 vrf by 8 all of this 5 so this for 3 we are doing this Now let us try to look at what is the logic in which we have to switch the capacitor. So if you look at it, let us say I take the second step. I mean the first step is always simple. First step I have to check if the input is always greater than Vrf by 2 or less than Vrf by 2. So first step I always go and ground the MSB capacitor to ground. First step is always trivial. Now starting from second step, if you notice the second capacitor is always connected to ground. right? And we are is it, is it, uh, three by two, six three by eight. Three fourth, yeah. No, no, this this is comparing with six feet of eight. Ah, okay. huh. Will it be giving six feet of eight? Correct. No, no, but we already put in initial condition of V in minus feet. Yeah, that is huh. okay. Let's assume feet and what will be the charge or what will be the voltage over there? So this voltage is what we found it. This this will be V in minus six six eight feet. Of. Okay, Th that's what we already saw, right? So, uh, that's what this voltage just with the capacitor division, it will be 
सॉरी टू एट वीरफ विल बी द कैपेसिटिव डिविजन बट वी ऑलरेडी पुट इन एन इनिशियल वोल्टेज ऑफ वीन माइनस वीरफ so if you look at the logic here in the second step we are definitely connecting the second capacitor to ground and uh, this guy is retained to ground here if the comparison output is 1 if it is 0 you go and flip this back to vrf same thing in the third step the third capacitor is always connected to ground that is the thing you have to do but you either uh, this second cap the previous capacitor is retained to ground if the previous comparison is 1 it is flipped back to vrf the comparison is zero same thing happens here also right so this is retained to one if this is one so if i have to write the logic in words k step i mean of course for k uh, greater than one so i'll basically go and connect the k capacitor to ground and if my previous comparison output is one i'll retain the k minus 1 capacitor at ground Okay. Else, I'll flip C K minus one back to V R F. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. D uh, K minus one is the output of the previous comparison. Previous comparison. That logic okay? That's what is happening here. So I have to show again. So the second step, if you see, the second capacitor is always connected to ground. C K is always connected to ground. now the other change can happen with with the previous capacitor the previous capacitor output is connected to it is retained at ground if the comparison output of the previous comparison is 1 if the output of the previous comparison is 0 to flip it back to v so same in the third step also third capacitor is always flipped to ground no confusion now the second capacitor is retained at ground if the previous comparison is 1 If it is zero, you go and flip it back to zero. This is the logic. Great. So now we have done a three-bit single-ended SAT. What is the next step? Ah. That is three ten. You don't change anything. See, that is simply because see, uh, if you look at the logic also, once you have made decision about the Let's say this is how it is, right? The tree structure. Once you have made decision whether it is here or here, this is fixed. You are always comparing in this region. So that change that will not change. So you flip the first capacitor to ground only in the second phase. So at any at kth step, you flip the kth capacitor, and you do you do change to the k minus one capacitor. based on the previous comparison that's all so hopefully this is clear so this is a three bit single ended version so what is the next thing that we have to do four differential four. i mean four bit is also not trivial right so now let's try for a three bit differential so differential case i have a differential input say delta v and the supply is again zero to vrf so what will be the range for the differential input delta v minus vrf to plus vrf we have seen this before also so this is plus vrf let us see now i have to compare this differential input in this range so in a three bit comparison what will be the first voltage with which i will compare the differential input with zero that is a middle reference and then the next step i'll either compare it with i'll just write half or minus half the third step i'll do 3/4 or 1/4 here it is minus 1/4 so if i look at the differential reference i'll call it some delta vr you see that this is of the form k times v of by 4 right The reference voltages are minus three fourth, minus half, minus one fourth, zero. It is of the form k times v of by four. And what is the what are the values possible values for k? 
माइनस थ्री टू प्लस थ्री दिस इज द रेंज फॉर के सो इन अ डिफरेंशियल केस वी हैव टू सी इफ डेल्टा वी माइनस डेल्टा वी आर इज ग्रेटर दैन जीरो और लेस दैन जीरो दैट्स ऑल ओके नाउ ऑफ कोर्स द इनपुट्स आर गिवन एस टू हाफ कॉस टू एंड नेगेटिव हाफ सो लेट से आई हैव डेल्टा वी बाई टू एंड माइनस डेल्टा वी बाई टू अवेलेबल now to the positive side of the comparator i have to feed something negative side of the comparator i have to feed something now one way is to feed the input in a truly differential fashion that is just like how i took the delta v i split it as delta v by 2 and minus delta v by 2 now if the differential input is this guy how will i give it to the positive and negative that means the question is clear if i have delta v I will give it as plus delta v by two and minus delta v by two. Now the differential input I am looking at is delta v minus delta v r. How will I split it as positive or negative? Minus delta v r by two. Ah, okay. So basically, if I have to write, it's delta v minus delta v r by two. That is one. The other side, I didn't have to erase. Yeah. Now on top of it, I have to add a DC shift so that. What is are all the proper bias? So supply is at VRF. We can the DC bias. Now I know what is uh, delta VR. Delta VR is K VRF by four. So delta VR by two is K VRF by eight. So I'll put that here. so if i do this if i apply the input in a truly differential fashion what will be the common mode of this that is the average of these two so that is the uh, point of giving a truly differential signal that is only the difference is changing the common mode doesn't change that is irrespective of what reference voltage i am comparing the input with the common mode is always fixed it doesn't change so now i can basically uh, combine these two so k v ref by 8 plus v ref by 2 how can i combine this what is this simplify this what is this huh? a minus 4 minus k 4 minus k okay Similarly, here if I compare uh, combine this, I love. So now I can think of. I mean, I know I have the this input available, this input available. I just need to add these reference voltages. Now I mean the circuits that we have seen, we know how to subtract the reference. Here it is slightly different. We have to add the reference. I'll give that as an exercise for you to work out and see how this can be achieved. We have to do slight modification. Okay. But uh, the point I want to highlight is, see here, what is the minimum reference voltage I need? Yeah, K goes to minus three to plus three. The minimum reference voltage I need here is E F by eight in both positive and negative paths. So if I want to have uh, generate a voltage of V ref by eight, what is the total capacitance I will need? Eight C. So I'll basically be doing something like this in the positive differential half. I'll have four C, two C, C and C. Similarly, in the uh, negative half also I have the same structure. now again i as i mentioned you work out how this capacitors must be switched because the references must be added here but the point is now in the entire thing what is the total capacitance i am using 16c now whereas in a single ended 3 bits are the total capacitance i needed was 8c right and uh, the reason we are having this uh, 8c capacitor in both positive and negative half is because we decided to feed the uh, reference also in a truly differential fashion like this notice that my differential reference voltage is of the form k v ref by 4 so in principle i would have needed only a capacitance of 4c to generate this but because i decided to go in a truly differential fashion 
I had to split it by plus half and minus half and that is why I needed 8c and this we are doing it to keep the common mode constant. Okay. Now let us say I do not uh, want it, I do not worry about the common mode being constant. So let me copy this. So let us say I do not worry about the common mode being constant. Okay. I will erase this. I do not want to use a capacitance of 8c in the positive half and 8c in the negative half because that is a lot of capacitor. I, I, I want to use only a capacitor of 4c in each half which means I can generate only k v ref by 4. Now notice that differentially I want this voltage to be delta v minus k v ref by 4. Right? Let us say this is the differential voltage I want. So let us say I am look for positive references. How will I feed the two inputs here? So that the voltage I will have is only k v ref by 4, not k v ref by 8, but the difference is this. What can I do? Just put it ah. Is that okay if I basically do this? But we know how to subtract references. The circuits we know, as the, I mean uh, based on the circuit we know, we can only subtract reference. Of course we can add also, but if you do this the difference is what you want and remember on top of it I also need to add the DC bias. So let us say that is some, I am adding a VRF by 2. Okay. Now for negative references I need to have delta V some plus K VRF by 4. right? So again in the positive side what will I give? I already have, I know how to generate circuits. I mean I know how to have circuits that subtracts references. So differentially I should have delta V plus K V ref by 4. I will put that here. And again I will need to have the DC shift here. Fine. So now if you see this guy is my plus side input, I will call it V i plus. This is the minus side input. Same as this. So what we are doing is basically if I have to compare my differential input with the positive reference. My plus side input is VIP minus K V ref by 4. Negative input is simply V i minus. If I have to compare with the negative reference, what do I do? If I compare, if I have to compare with negative reference, where do I add the, where do I subtract the reference? No. The negative half. Okay. Yeah. But if I do this, what can you say about the common mode here? So, what is the value? V ref by two. So here, the common mode is not same. Based on the input with which I am comparing, it is dropping. That is the price we have to pay. Now, yeah, the thing is now remember that this two inputs are going to the comparator. Now, if the common mode is continuously changing, even the comparator must be able to take in that much of common mode. Right? So, which means your co the comparator must have a wide common mode range in which it can operate. That's all. So, now if you think about it, the logic is simple. If I were to compare my input with positive side references, I will go switch capacitors in the positive side. If I have to compare my input with negative references, I will switch the uh, capacitors in the negative side. So, and in each side, I just need a total capacitance of 4C. So, I will have a structure like this now. In the positive side, here, 2C, C, and C. In the negative side, also, I have 2C. C and C. So as usual, first I have to put in the initial voltage of V in minus V ref. So what we'll do is this. This is V i plus V i minus. So this is the first sampling phase. Now after sampling, 
what is the first reference voltage I have to compare the differential input with? What is the first voltage I have to compare with? Zero. Zero. So what is the value of k here? Zero. So which means what should I do? I don't have to switch any capacitor. Okay. So what this means is simple now. In the first phase, I just have the capacitors like this before. PRF, PRF, PRF. I don't need to switch any capacitor because if you see the voltage in the sampling phase in this polarity was what? VIP minus VRF. Okay. So now what we have done is we have disconnected the switch here. Hmm? So that node is floating. So what will be this voltage now? Same, right? Because earlier we had put in an initial condition VIP minus VRF. We are not drawing any charge out of this guy. Voltage must be same. That this guy is at VRF, so this has to be at VIP. Okay. This is because we are not losing any charge from the capacitor. So this is VIP. By the same logic, this is VIM. So I just need to compare with zero, which means I have to see if it is the positive side is greater than the negative side or vice versa. So I'll go and feed this directly to the comparator. And if I find that the input is greater than zero, I have to compare with positive references. So I'll switch the references in the positive side. So this here shows the uh, full switching thing. So let me zoom in. Yeah. So as we saw, first we sample the input and put in the initial condition of VIP minus VRF, VIM minus VRF. Once you sample it, you disconnect the switch. So this will be VI plus. And the first comparison you do is with zero. Done. That is straight away you get it for free. And if the input is greater than zero, we have to switch the references in the positive side. You switch only the positive side. Negative is untouched. So in the entire thing, you see that the uh, negative side, we don't touch anything. You only switch references in the positive side. Same will happen in the negative side. Okay. So this uh, works fine. I mean, this is indeed a proper uh, you know circuit. But there is one issue here, which is the following. So if you notice the logic we have been using in our case so far, we go to the yeah. So what in our logic states that at every kth step, I am switching the kth capacitor to ground. That is completely fine. In addition to this, I am also doing this. That is, if the previous decision is uh, 0, I am going and flipping the k-1 capacitor to VRF. So it looks like that is kind of a waste, right? Because if you see, Is it? Hold on. Ah. Yeah, because actually, if you think about it, if I have this R, this is the comparator. I'll draw a single ended version. So I have a bunch of capacitors. So the last one is always connected to VRIF. So here, with some switches, I'll have connection to VRIF. So this SAR ADC, this is the simplistic you know, uh, structure. So where all are we consuming the power from? Power yeah, where I mean from which all places are the consuming power? So the comparator is taking some power for sure. Other place? Yeah. Basically every time we are doing this capacitor switching. Hold on. Yeah, every time we are doing the capacitor switching. Notice that this voltage has to change, so charges has to read. Charges have to redistribute, and those charges are coming from VRF. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, that's what. But that's a problem, right? That's what I'm getting at. See. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. So here, if you see, uh, let us say my previous com this you switch the first capacitor, and the comparison output was zero. So basically, we go here, and here you see that we are flipping this capacitor. Sorry, top side. You flip this capacitor back to VRF and you connect this to ground. So here you already spend some energy 
you draw some you drew some current from the reference and switched it to ground now you found that hey, i don't have to do this so again reverting it back so looks like we are kind of unnecessarily drawing energy from the reference supply then we are doing this so let us see if we can avoid this that is once i make the decision that is if i switch a capacitor to ground i don't want to switch it back to vrex no 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 that's already put in right that should be fine it is initially charged to this you think about it right charge conservation and shift so the point i'm getting at is this kind of flipping the capacitor back from zero to vrex that is an additional step we are doing we are taking additional energy from the supply so let's see if we can avoid it so again uh, i'll just draw the thing quickly so the case we are considering is let us say i am comparing v in with vrf by 2 if the decision is zero i'll go and compare with vrf by 4 this is what we are interested in so let me draw the positive and negative half quickly so for comparing with vrf by 2 i'll connect this guy to ground this will be at vrf i am comparing with the positive references so negative side i will not switch anything so this side will be vi plus minus vrf by 2 this will be vi plus so this is what we have now so when i switch it to vrf by 4 what do i do what changes i mean when i go from here to here what should i what should be the change i should make here the 2c capacitor must be connected back to vrf this must be connected to ground so this will give and in fact this flipping back is what we are trying to avoid okay so let me draw that here then so let us say i want to avoid this flipping back so which means once i switch the capacitor to ground i will not bring it back to vrf okay and here if you see the uh, positive side or let us say see if i don't switch this capacitor back to vrf this voltage i mean if i if i cannot switch this capacitor back to vrf the only switching i can do here is what i don't want to flip any capacitor back to vrf what is the other possible switching i can do in this branch the only thing i can do is flip this to ground right but if i connect this to ground what will happen to this voltage 3/4 that's not what you want okay so which means in the positive side i cannot do anything it will be at vi vip minus vrf by 2 as of now the negative side is only vi minus but let us say i want uh the differential input is delta v in minus v of by 4 is there something i can do in the negative half so that the differential input is this plus or so if i somehow make this as minus v of by 4 you take the difference so if i want to make this vim minus v of by 4 what change i should make here I let me draw two C, C and C. What capacitor is connected to ground? The middle capacitor C must be connected to ground. So then this will be minus V of V. So here at least it looks like we are not flipping the capacitor back, and uh, at least logically it makes sense that this should be consuming lesser power. Let's quickly verify that. Uh, what can I do? Can I copy paste it? Sorry. Okay. So let's try to find what is the power we are drawing in both cases. So let us say in the earlier case here, we are switching from this circuit to this circuit, right? And if you notice, the switching is not happening in the negative side. So only consider the positive side. And let me erase this. 
so this is all the ref so i can think of it as voltage source vref i am interested to find what is the current drawn from the voltage source so now this is the current drawn this splits here and finally comes here right so if i call this current i what can you say about this current that should be same current i mean this is the current from the supply and here is where the return path is to ground it's a closed loop circuit are all closed loops right remember i have something like this so whatever comes here has to come here that's what we are doing so to find the current that is being drawn out of the supply i'll just find what is the current that is flowing into the capacitor that is connected to ground that's all and remember that uh, if we have ideal switches when we change from one phase to the other phase or what can you say about capacitor voltages they will change suddenly currents will be impulsive so to find the current i'll just look at the change in the voltage so here in the previous phase this is the capacitor what is the voltage across the capacitor this voltage is vip minus vrf by 2 this is vrf what is the initial voltage minus i mean initial voltage in this capacitor in this polarity right minus okay okay now in the uh, in the current phase the voltage across the capacitor is what so this is the delta v in the capacitor and what is this simplify this so 3 half minus 1 fourth that is 1.5 minus 0.25 so 5 fourth okay now this is delta vc what can you say about the delta q that is drawn into c so the same delta q is drawn here also so if that is the case what can you say about the energy no 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 i mean it's not the energy stored in the capacitor i know what is the charge we are drawing out of the voltage source i know the value of the voltage source what is the energy v into, v into q yeah please note if i know voltage and current how will i find energy if i know voltage and current how will i find the energy i mean what is the definition of energy physics ha huh? we take integral of v of t i of t yeah. right now in this case voltage is constant so this is basically v times this integral of i of t is charge voltage times charge so what is the uh, energy now this is the charge so this is the energy in the old case so let's look at what happens when we uh, do the new thing new thing let me try to make space here itself so let's try to compute what happens when we do this kind of thing okay so here uh, we are doing the switching in the positive side or in the negative side in the negative side so i'll only look at the uh, negative side portion for now so again i have to find what is the uh, charge that is being drawn out of here and the simplest thing is to look at the charge that is going into the ground i look at the total capacitance connected to the ground i look at what is the total charge flowing into those capacitors so here it is again c and 2c so again let me final voltage is what here and the same capacitor i have to look in the previous phase what was the initial voltage vi minus vrf vi so if i take the difference what is it 3/4 vrf vi vi so what is the energy then 3/4 vrf so is it better or bad earlier it was 5/4 now it's 3/4 at least 60% reduction 
so when we do the scheme it is indeed beneficial and if you look at the logic also it is now actually much simpler so what we are doing is earlier when the previous comparison was zero we were doing two things i mean in any step we are doing two things we are flipping the kth capacitor to ground for sure in addition to it we are doing one more thing if the previous comparison was zero the previous capacitor we are going and flipping it to vref now if you see we are not doing any such of any kind of flipping back if the previous comparison was zero we go and flip the capacitor in the bottom half that's all earlier what we did we flip the capacitor in the positive half and connected this back to vref two things were happening right now it's much more simpler and cleaner we are only flipping the capacitor then again that's all so so this shows all the possibilities so the first phase is all as usual put in the initial condition and then disconnect the switch here so this will be vi plus vi minus give it to the comparator and compare if it is greater than 0 less than 0 now what we do if it's greater than 0 we switch the capacitor in the positive half if it is less than 0 we go and switch the capacitor in the bottom half okay now same thing in the second step so in in that say in this step if the previous comparator output is 1 you flip the uh, capacitor in the positive side here it is zero right and same happens here if the comparison output is 1 flip the capacitor in the positive side zero flip it in the negative side okay so uh, this is much more cleaner and in this way we are not doing any kind of uh, reversing the switching action back to and this way we will save a lot of energy so if i have to write the uh, logic in words first thing is always simple i will sample it i will not do any switching that will compare if my input is greater than 0 or less than 0 once that is done in any kth step what am i doing yeah if i if the previous decision was 1 ck is connected to ground in the positive side if previous comparison was zero i'll flip the capacitor in the negative side to ground that's all there is only one thing happening we are only flipping the kth capacitor to ground either in the positive side or in the negative side we don't touch the previous capacitor at all so this way we can save a lot of energy and uh, this is often referred to as the monotonic switching simply because we are not reversing the switching action back so we are continuously switching capacitors to ground it's monotonically switching and i mean the sar adc itself was known like several you know like hundreds of years back also but this was proposed only recently in 2010 a guy called c c liu has done exceptional work in sar adcs and uh, till now if you take any sar adc 80% probability that you will find people use this thing because this is one of the most energy efficient schemes of course there are other schemes also but the beauty of this is that in addition to being energy efficient the logic for switching is pretty straight forward there are other schemes where energy efficiency is there but the complexity for this logic will be too much so this is a very popular and uh, still very commonly used switching scheme called monotonic switching i'll share the paper if you are interested so this is clear so let me just quickly show so finally this rdc is going to look like this for now positive and negative so we have a bunch of capacitors remember that if you have an n bit sar they make a fully differential version n bit sar i making a fully differential version what will be the total capacitance in the positive side if, no if for an 8 bit sorry for a 3 bit sar for a 3 bit sar what was the capacitance in the positive side 
no no look carefully total is 8c it was split as 4c and 4c okay so similarly here the total capacitance will have in the positive side is 2 power n minus 1c sorry here also i'll have and uh, so let me make some space here what will be the value of this msb capacitor 2 power n minus 2 okay and the next will be 2 power n minus 3 and it will go till you will have one more c c like this and the this c is always connected to vref according to our switching scheme and these guys are either connected to vref or ground okay i will not show for everything and basically uh, you take the comparator output you have some logic here we'll come to how to realize this logic and then you go and control all the switches now if you look at this we know how to make a comparator and the comparator we know it's a dynamic circuit it has only dynamic power consumption in addition to the comparator we are having a logic it's a digital logic in principle you really you realize with cmos logic will there be a static power consumption in cmos logic is there a static power consumption no so this also a dynamic and uh, other power consumption is the power that is drawn from the reference supply to charge the capacitors that is also dynamic so truly this is a dynamic circuit there is no static power consumption okay. so it's a dynamic thing with no static power consumption and second you see that there is uh, you just need a comparator besides that everything is a uh, digital or all passives even comparator if you think about it a strong arm latch is kind of uh, cross coupled inverters like this right this is the core of it this can also be thought of as a digital block so truly without using any op amps or analog circuitry we can make an adc i i mean the strong arm latch you have the differential pair but uh, the core of that is not to act like an amplifier as such right so it was just uh, you know yeah it's not truly a digital block but what i'm saying is it's more digital than an analog block so this is uh, again can be made with truly almost digital blocks and because of that it's more scaling friendly right and uh, takes very small space i mean takes up very small area now one thing is uh, see here we have the comparator output this will be yeah this comparator output is a digital bit let us say 0 or 1 this digital data is processed by this logic and finally this uh, switching we are switching the capacitor accordingly and generating some k vrf by n or something some reference voltage so we are taking a digital input and providing a corresponding voltage so what is this something that takes a digital output digital input and provides some analog output DAC. it's a dac okay but notice that it is not dac in the sense that see if the, let's say the digital data is 1 2 3 let's say 1 if this is the digital data what we are doing is we are converting into some voltage v not 2 v not 3 v not v not like this it is not as though we are taking these samples and getting a continuous time data out of it so this is also a dac but it is a dac in the sense that it is just taking the digital data and converts those into equivalent samples in analog domain it is not getting a smooth continuous time signal okay. so uh, this also so because of this this structure is often referred to as capacitive dac or c dac basically the job of this is to take the comparator output and provide some analog input because even if you look at it at a block level our sar was this the comparator was there we had the input and we have to look at the digital output of the comparator do something here and feed in an analog voltage here 
so this is indeed a duck and this digital to analog conversion we are achieving using a capacitor so it's called a cnuck cool so this is the uh, basic structure of sar so after mid sum we look at how to realize this logic okay. yeah and then we'll see what are the issues with sar later so let's stop